Good morning everybody, Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today's video is going to be all about the raid rerun. We're going to look at all the things, the fights, the gear, the drops, all of it. I'm going to show you what I'm using to clear the fights. We're going to watch those fights in action, try and get you set up to uh, get everything you want to from this really, really good event. Okay, I want to start the video out with a big shout out to the members on the YouTube channel and the patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support. Like, it means a ton to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's talk about the gear that you can farm first. I am not going to go into like a detailed breakdown of each piece of gear here. What I'm going to do instead is talk about the pieces of gear that you're going to have access to and that I use the most. So if I was going to be... Um, farming some of this stuff for the first time, what do I think you're going to get a lot of value of in your account? So here we are in the metal shop. This is where you can go trade your uh, metals in for the recipes. Now note these first four, these are what you can farm exactly the materials for um, from the bosses. I'll show that um, infograph here in a second, but these will be the easiest four to farm because you're going to be able to get all of the components to drop by doing the fights. Of those four, I do use the platinum robe and platinum helm quite a bit. Alexandrite ring, I don't really use it that much. I'm not going to lie, I don't use the Alexandrite ring very much. It's a nice piece of accuracy gear. Purple lightning, if you're going to use Laswell, or you're going to use um, anybody who can use Laswell's type of weapon that is an ice unit, hey, here you go, purple lightning is where it's at. After that, Soul of Thamasa, I do get quite a bit of use out of my Soul of Thamasa on my mages. I use Elf's Cloak all the time, and I want to say that ever since I got Elf's Cloak, I haven't used Platinum Robe as much, because this is a very, very nice defense piece of gear that's also an accessory, and I think that's a bit of an advantage over the Platinum Robe, so just keep that in mind. I really like the Elf's Cloak if you don't have one yet. Defense Bracer, pretty situational piece of gear, use it in Guild Wars a lot. Galmea Coat, all the time on my mages, one of the best pieces of gear in my, in my inventory. Brigandine, absolutely love the Brigandine, AoE resist, lots of defense, lots of HP. Knight Armor, I also would recommend this one, it is one of the best pieces of magic resist armor in the game, you just have to be a, you know, plate armor wearing unit to wear it. But those are the ones I would suggest. Knight Armor, Brigandine, Galmea Coat, Elf's Cloak, Soul of the Masa. And then, you know, if you want to do one of these like Platinum Helm or Platinum Robes, okay. And then Purple Lightning. Those are the ones I would recommend focusing on depending on how your account is. If you have a bunch of mages and you're a mage player, Soul of the Masa and Galmea Coat all the way. Okay, what I'm going to do next is throw an infograph on the screen. And this graph is showing which drops each boss has, as well as which raid that they came with. Like, which piece of raid gear did each one of these bosses come with? So, if you are focusing on one of those, you know which boss to farm, etc. So, there you see King Behemoth. The special thing to point out about King Behemoth is he's the only one who drops the Ice Mega Crist of these four. The other three are Void Mega Crist. So, if you need Void Mega Crist, you can farm any of the other ones. Um, this is your purple lightning fight, the King Behemoth is, so if you're building up your Laswell, if you want to use Laswell, or, you know, anybody else who uses that type of weapon and is an ice unit in the future, boom, this could be your guy. He's got the white spirit sand, the mithril ore, and the black spirit sand, so there you go. Next up, Chocolate Flan, you see he's got both hearts, Blissful and Joyful, Bone Chips, and Void Megacris. Um, Ifrit, there's your unidentifiable, <laughs> unidentifiable, you cannot file this sap, you probably can, but it's the unidentifiable sap, it's the stuff that they use in Jurassic Park to make dinosaurs, that's what it is, it, that's exactly what it is, anyway, there's also sacred tree sap and ogre bristles, then in the white flan, there is black spirit sand, white spirit sand, bone chips, and void megacris, so, if you need any one of those drops more than the others, that's the boss you should probably try and farm. They will not drop the recipes that you see there. I just included that because it was an easy way of showing like which piece of gear came with which one of these raids in the past. Um, so there you go. That's the breakdown on that. Now, you're going to get coins from each one of these bosses. So I want to jump into the coin shop here and scroll down a little bit. Like obviously your priority one should be to get the recipes that you need 
for whatever piece of gear. Like if you're building an elf cloak, it will take you 63 recipes to finish that elf cloak, right? So 63 times 2,000, real quick math, that's 126,000. Did I do that right? I probably did. Um, metals that you'll need for 63 elf, elf cloak recipes. Now, special shout out. I did a little uh, note taking earlier. If you buy the plus three for a 1,000 paid visitor from the shop, you only need 48 recipes to finish the thing, so that can be really helpful. Okay, now if we scroll down though, what else should you be spending your tokens on in the shop? I actually think you pass on all of this stuff, even the Blossom of Paradise, even the Fragments of Thought. Like now, if you're just done, if you farm the heck out of this and you don't need any more of this good gear, maybe come visit this stuff, but you can get these from other places. I actually think that for this shop, you're better off targeting things you cannot otherwise farm in the story. Things like your, your Joyful Heart, Sacred Tree Sap, Slimy Fluids, Ogre Bristles, things that are hard to get. Avoid spending your tokens on things like Unidentifiable Saps and Black Spirit Sands because you can farm that stuff in the story. So, WoeWerTheVisionsCalc.com, that's going to be your best friend here. If you're wanting to build an Elf Cloak, visit WoeWerTheVisionsCalc.com. Go look at what you need for that Elf Cloak. Think about what you can farm in the story what you're only going to be able to get from this raid and make sure you're spinning your medals on things you're only going to be able to get right now or you're going to have to wait till the next raid rerun to farm those things. Okay, now we're going to go fight by fight and talk about how you can actually go about farming these. I'm going to show you the unit that I am using to farm. In a lot of cases, I can actually solo the Brutal. Only in one case can I solo the Brutal on full auto, where I don't have to do anything. I can just hit go, hit have auto on, and that unit will kill the boss. That's actually Ifrit. That's the fight that's playing on the screen right now. I'm going to tell you how I built my unit, show off the weaknesses of the boss, so even if you can't do it exactly like I'm doing it, in some cases you'll probably be able to do it better than I'm doing it. Cough, cough, white flan, I hate that fight. Um, anyway, I'll just give you like the tips that I think you need to get set up, so at least you won't get kicked out of a multi-group if your account isn't, um, if you have a newer account or something like that. So, for Ifrit, you can see he's weak to water and magic. So somewhere else or else, boom, she's going to be a winner. Ildira, going to be a winner. Like, that's the theme. Titus could absolutely rock this guy, even though you're missing out on that um, that magic weakness. I guarantee you, with a well-built Titus, you could absolutely, like, manual this thing on Brutal. It's not that difficult. Ifrit is the easiest to farm for me, and he's going to be the one I'm focusing on farming the most. Even though his drops aren't as good as some of the other ones, in my opinion, those medals, you get 1,500 raid medals a kill on Brutal. That's insane. So I'm just going to have my Elsie just kill this thing over and over and over again. I'm going to stack those medals, and I'm going to make sure I get all of the recipes that I want from this event by farming Ifrit the most. Now, look at the bottom right. You, this is the way I'm setting up Elsorel for this fight. The key here are is three things. The key here are three things. It sounds like I'm talking like I'm from where I'm from. If you get it, you get it. Anyway, Water Ring, Siren Vision Card, and Siren Esper. This is boosting the fire resist of my unit to 92%. Now, Elsorel has natural fire resist because she's water, and she has a support ability that further boosts her fire resist. But at 92% fire resist, this fight's simple. Like, Ifrit can't kill me. Like, turns almost run out sometimes when I win this, but even when turns almost run out, I'm at like 50% HP. Ifrit just can't hurt me. The other mages in this fight are fire mages. They also can't hurt me. So with this fire resist build, you can just slaughter Ifrit. And it's one of the best strategies, I think, that there is for taking down these bosses is look at what kind of damage they do, look at what their element is, and maybe build up a resist if you're trying to solo it on Brutal. Okay, let's go to the next raid. Okay, the White Flan, aka the White Marshmallow. You guys, I hate this fight. It is my least favorite one, but we can still talk about it, and the fight I'm actually showing you on the screen is not the Brutal difficulty, because, like, I just hate it too much. But check out his um, weaknesses. Now, he's weak to Dark, and he's weak to Slash. So, like, Dark Slash, if you're doing this with a multi-group, you're gonna slaughter him. There's so many dark slashing units, but I want to shout out Venera in particular because the ads in this fight put you to sleep. So Venera has a natural 50 resistance to sleep, and if you happen to have the 
the White Marshmallow Miniature plus 5. There is Sleep Resistance plus 25 on there. So by stacking up some Sleep Resistance, you can nullify the effectiveness of those ads. And if you want to be somebody who tries to power through this on Brutal Solo, I think Venera is a really good option. In fact, I've seen screenshots from people in my guild who have cleared this fight on Brutal by themselves with Venera. I just hate it. There's something about this fight that rubs me the wrong way, so I quit trying to do it like that, and it's not going to be the one I farm anyway, but that's the strategy here. Dark Slash, just go for it. Dark Slash, crazy. You won't get kicked out of a multi-group if you bring a Dark Slashing unit that's, like, reasonably leveled up. Okay, let's go next. Okay, so the Chocolate Flam. Let me tell you some of you newer folks, some of you younglings out there, a story about the Chocolate Flam. When this raid came out back in the day, you were one of two people. You had a high-level Lucia, or you did not have a high-level Lucia. If you had a high-level Lucia, this was easy. He, notice he's very weak to missile. He's weak to wind. You made a raid. You had quad shot on, and you just walked in there, and you're like, bang, 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 and you guys just you lit him up. You just destroyed him. Sometimes those groups would let a Frederica in if they were feeling generous, but mostly it was four Lucias just shooting this guy to death. Okay, if you weren't one of those people... You had Medina or something, and you just kind of ran your Medina out there. You did not win on the first run. You took it to like 30, 40%. You used a raid orb restore. You ran the raid again, and it was terrible. So getting some revenge on the chocolate flan has been fun. However, I do think this is still one of the like, it, it's difficult. I don't think I can auto this one on multi or on brutal by myself. But I can manual it. So, the fight that you're watching on the screen, that's my Tifa manualing this thing. Now, let's talk again about the boss real quick. Weak to wind, weak to missile, and weak to magic. So, I do think you have a lot of options for units that you could bring to a multi-room and do this. Gargus, a free unit. Corwell, a free unit. Yeah, you would have to, like, have invested into Corwell a little bit to build him up. But he hits, he checks all the boxes here. And I think if you brought Corwell to like a wind missile group, you're not going to get kicked. People aren't going to kick somebody who is good against this boss, in my opinion. So those are good options. Now, if you want to solo him, I can do it with Tifa, but let me tell you the tricks here that I had to use to clear it. One, I had to go crit. Um, I was running out of turns because I wasn't doing enough damage. So I went with a critical build, critical Kaiser Knuckle, crit damage up with Titus's Necklace. An Assault Kaiser Knuckle can still do it. In fact, sometimes it does it better. It was just a little less consistent. Now, I also have to pay attention to my agility in this fight. There's a couple of times where because I position where I do, the flan will actually like run around a little bit and sometimes that will give me two turns in a row. When that happens, I need to be ready to do Tifa's four hit attack into her biggest damage two hit attack. That is the way I was doing enough damage to actually kill this thing. And when I figured that out, that's when I was able to um, actually take this down on Brutal Solo. This has been the best thing that I have found. I think there will be plenty of multi-rooms running with Tifa in them, and that'll be fine, right? If you bring Tifa to a multi-rooms of Tifa, you could just sit out here and be like, four-hit combo, four-hit combo, four-hit combo, and you'll destroy this thing, right? Just absolutely demolish him, and it shouldn't be too big of a problem for you. If you have bells, that will make it easier. If you have a bunch of crit, that'll make it easier, but I don't think it's super necessary. And that brings us to the last one of the fights, and that's going to be King Behemoth. So, I'm using Yuna for this fight. Again, this is a fight that I have to manual, or at least I have to manual the first couple turns. I need to get my unit into a good position and have her pop bells at some point. And on, ma and on auto, I still need to get lucky with a couple Aeon Bonds so she doesn't spend a ton of the fight healing herself. The fight that you're seeing on the screen is just me doing it in manual. I can win this 100% of the time in manual. And I think Yuna, like groups of Yunus or groups of light element mages won't have much of a problem killing this thing. Now, if we look at his weaknesses a little bit more specifically, he is weak to light, like we've talked about. He is also weak to pierce. Now, light element piercing units, Warrior of Light and Camilo are the two that come to mind. Camilo was a free unit. If you could do the light selection quest and you were able to get Camilo, I feel like he will be a good option here. I have not built Camilo, so I don't know if you can actually go solo this quest on Brutal with him. But I guarantee you, four Camilos, like with bells or any kind of good gear, we'll be able to just destroy this guy. He's not that tough 
to beat, especially with those weaknesses lined up in your favor. He is particularly strong against Slash, so I want to shout that out, but the rest of his um, attack type resistances aren't a big deal. And in fact, I would say any kind of chaining pierce unit in general with bells with the right setup could probably take him out i'm using yuna i don't think this one's going to be particularly hard to kill in multi-groups yuna is the unit that i have though that can solo it on brutal and that's going to do it for my raid rerun guide. So I hope you got something out of this. Like, again, I know I mentioned it before. I'm going to mention it again to save myself replying to about 30 comments. I have different stuff than other people do. Some people have stronger accounts than me. Some people have played for as long as I have. Some people haven't. What I hope this did was show you the way I thought about beating these raid bosses. Prioritize things like long chains. If you're in fights where you can steal time, bring a steal time unit, that's a good way to make yourself useful. To a multi-room if you don't have one of the units that like maybe is ideal for fighting it. Otherwise, try and build a unit if you're trying to farm a specific raid. Try and build a unit that groups are going to find useful. If you're going into a dark slashing group, bring a dark slashing unit. So people will be like, yeah, this Venera can help us out. This Gaff Garion can help us out. I used Gaff Garion a lot back in that white flan raid. Gap Garion was an MVP of that raid back in the day, so your lower your lower tier units can contribute to groups no problem. Okay, hit that like button if you would, if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.